Caroline, this is our last recipe. We've got some amazing ingredients here. What are we cooking? Okay, we're going to make a foolproof tea cake that celebrates all of the fruits throughout the seasons. Okay. It's got equal quantities of self-raising flour. Okay. Yeah. And then raw sugar. You can use caster sugar or brown sugar. I just love the textural crunch of the raw sugar. Yep. We've got five eggs from your chooks. Oh my chooks Thank which you, are chickies. <laughs> and then uh, 250 grams of melted butter. I used to um, cook in a kitchen and I didn't have any time. So all of my cakes had to really look after me, not me look after them. Yep. You don't want to over mix flour because it can go a little bit tough. Okay. If you wanted to, you could just give them a little whisk before we put them in. Look but at the texture already. It's like know. really come together quickly. It's just beautiful. And yep. then straight into our lined baking dish or cake tin. This is about a 20 centimetre cake tin here. Yeah. Push this into the corners. Yeah. And then the fun begins because we just get to poke stuff into it. Because it's such a quick and easy recipe, yep. we do need to move quickly so that okay. the self-raising flour has the best chance of rising up through all the fruit. So, what can I do? Uh, you know what? I want you to open that up and scoop it out, all the slithery goodness. All oh, right, OK. <laughs> so I've got the custard apple. These got the good job. are a little bit overripe. I told you I'd pick these earlier on. Yeah. Um, but look at oh, that. Oh, right. yeah. That's just fantastic. There's a little bit of, of work in there, but what we'll have is this lovely creamy ricotta and then that smooth custard apple coming through. You can see why it gets that sort of yeah, that name custard apple. It's got quite it. a custardy sort of texture, hasn't Yum. it? So I'm going to pop those to one side because I'll plant them in the garden at and, some other point. Uh, oh, right. OK. So what I'll probably get you to do is move it above here yeah. and I'm just going to... Fingers? Fingers, Let's fingers. Let's do it. Then poke it all in with this lovely quince. So this quince is not cooked, yeah. which is... You know, we're taking a bit of a gamble here, Trev. That's well, what baking's all about. see what you've done, though. You've cut it fine so that it's going to cook over that 40 or so minutes in the oven. Yeah, and you can imagine, if we just use the custard apple, we're not going to get that nice crunch or no. uh, texture there. So this is why we've chosen to do this. I can do this with peaches or cherries or boysenberry. Heaps of options here. To finish, we just put a little bit of your gorgeous honey. What yeah. have your bees been eating, actually? Okay. Well, we kind of get about two harvests a year. So the first half of the year is wildflowers. So that's what we've got here. So it's a lot oh, yeah. lighter one. And the second half is the red gums. So you start to get a really rich red colour coming through the honey. Time for the oven. It's on 180 degrees yep. and it'll cook for about 45 minutes. Okay. But with cakes, I just find check them every 10 to 20. Trevor, let's get started on the curd. Mm -hmm. It's a play on the traditional lemon curd, but we're going to use that lovely rhubarb that we picked earlier. OK. And I'll just get you to chop that into, say, one-inch pieces. And the aim is we're going to keep as much of this red as we can. Mm -hmm. But rhubarb is one of those things that it does lose a little bit of its vibrancy once, starts once it blanch, starts cooking. It does it? Yeah. yeah, OK. Take that. There oh. we go. Great. This can be done in a food processor, but Thermomix is uh, nice and quick. And we're going to blitz this up till it's nice and fine. Right. OK, that should do the trick. We're going to pass this through the sieve. OK. It's a little bit of an action job. OK. Go for it. And then this is just literally pushing it through. OK, now let's blitz up our egg. All right. And corn flour with the sugar. And we're just going to make a, a little slurry, if you will. I'm amazed how much fibre's in this. Uh, in this. Yeah. There's still so much. It's incredible. So I've got a double boiler here. And this just keeps it nice and gentle. You can, again, just do it in a straight um, saucepan if you like. Yeah. But I like the double boiler. It gives me a little bit more control. So we're going to put the juice in. And... Look at the colour. This little 
egg, sugar, and corn flour, and I will need the whisk, okay. monsieur. There we go. And the cold butter. I'm gonna whisk this in slowly. This is uh, probably takes about 10 minutes in total yeah. to whisk this, and the butter will slowly soften. You don't want to move away from it though, because it will start to clump. What we're looking for is the consistency that would coat the back of a wooden spoon, and that's when you know that you're done. Okay. This curd's looking great. Mm. I think it's time to pair it with the cake. Oh, and look at that cake. Yum. That looks amazing. All right. Well, you can let this curd cool and it'll go um, set quite thick. Yep. But I think for this, we're going to use it a bit more like a custard. Okay. Yes. Beautiful. Oh. <laughs> it smells so good. Yes. Like fresh baked tea cake smell amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. I can't, I can't help it. <laughs> that is just incredible. Yeah, that's fantastic.